Hey guys, welcome to another video here. Uh, I have another deck tech for you guys. It's a unique one, and that is kind of the first, uh, what I would call, budget decks that I'm doing uh, for this channel. Um, I think, you know, it's kind of hard to, to when you think about budget decks in terms of arena, since it's free and, you know, the kind of economy system is, is a little bit different. Um, since you're not paying money directly for cards necessarily, you pay for gems or you pay for packs. Um, you know, which may or may not get you the cards that you need, um, so it's a little bit more difficult. But in this case, um, you know, when I compare this to other decks, um, this is uh, much more affordable um, in terms of wild cards, um, and is, and by you know, from from what I can look at and from from how I view this deck, uh, is pretty on par with the power level of other competitive decks. Might not, it's not a tier 1 deck, but it is it can compete against them um, and have and feel like you're playing the game. Um, so this is Mono White Weenie, Mono White Aggro, White Weenie uh, is, is probably the, the, the better way to, to describe this deck, as you can see here. Um, so we have a ton of 1-drops um, and then a few cards um, that allow us to kind of uh, go wide and and build a substantial wide kind of army. Um, so yeah, let's uh, go down the list here. You got uh, Beloved Princess, 1-1 uh, Lifelinker um, that can't be blocked by creatures with power 3 or greater, which has actually come up in some games, um, so interesting to note. New edition from Kaldheim, uh, Code Spell Cleric. 1-1 one, one with Vigilance, and if you cast it as your second spell, uh, then you get to put a plus and plus encounter on target creature. So it could just be a 2-2 two, two Vigilance, or it can buff something up. Um, so you can play a double 1-drop, like you can play this, and another, uh, or, or a 1-drop, and then this. And then you can um, put the counter on itself, or the other creature. So uh, a good, a good cheap card, definitely. Uh, we have Giant Killer, which is, excuse me. Uh, great at eliminating giant creatures and also can come down later and um, tap down the board, or you can just play it straight up as a 1-1. One, one. Uh, another addition from... oh, sorry, let's do Selfish Savior first. Skip that one. Selfish Savior, 1-1, one, one, sacked and gave something indestructible. This is pretty much in every single aggro uh, white aggro deck um, in existence, so nothing nothing uh, too surprising there. Uh, Usher of the Fallen is the new addition. Another addition uh, from Kaldheim, 2-1 uh, Spirit Warrior, and it can boast to make a 1-1 one, one Human Warrior. Uh, and then we have Venerable Knight, which is a 2-1 that, when it dies, puts a counter on another knight. I believe the only other knight here is just more Venerable Knights. I don't think anything else is a knight. Um, so the, the the death trigger isn't really relevant unless you have another, one, uh, another um, Venerable Knight, but it's just a 1-mana 2-1. Um, which is very valuable. Uh, two, two power is kind of what you want. Um, for some spells, we have Kabira Takedown, which I can act as a land or removal. Again, we go super, super wide. Uh, we have Luminarch Aspirant, which is, again, a main staple in any white aggro deck. Um, just sits on the battlefield, puts counters on stuff, makes stuff big, and we kind of need this. This is kind of how we go tall as well as wide. Um, and can win if we ever get into a board stall. Uh, and then we have Seasoned Hellblade, which is great against removal, um, or just people that want to interact in combat, um, trading, you know, lands in our hand or useless cards um, to give this indestructible and trade with a creature, um, or maybe get some attacks in, uh, is really valuable. And then to top things off, we have two of the cards that let us go wide. We have Sanctuary Lockdown, which gives all humans plus one plus one. I believe every single one of these creatures that we just mentioned is a human, uh, except for Selfless Savior, uh, Selfless Savior and Usher of the Fallen, excuse me. So um, it should buff most of your team. Um, and then, you know, the, the tap ability isn't really that relevant, but it's there. Um, Heraldic Banner. Of course, you enters and you choose white. Creatures get uh, plus one plus O, oh, and it can add mana, so you can potentially use this to cast something on the turn it comes down to cast one of your one drops. So heraldic mana is kind of the card that ties everything together. 
Um, and then we have 16 snow-covered plains and faceless haven to wrap things up. A very valuable creature land um, that also has every single creature type. So I guess in that case, we do have another knight for venerable knight, and we do have extra uh, humans for sanctuary lockdown. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, the, the, the creature type part of Faces Haven being relevant. Um, so yeah, that's the deck. Uh, there is a sideboard. I'll show you guys the sideboard real quick. Uh, pretty standard stuff. Dauntless Unity seems kind of interesting. Um, the Longboat, um, you know, is probably just... I'm not sure what it's there for. Um, Skycliff Apparition is really good. Um, if you don't have it, it's not necessary. Um, but yeah, that's the one of the things, by the way, that... Uh, makes uh, this deck great, as I said, or makes it budget, is that um, if you were just going to play this in best of one, there are, I believe I went through it, yeah, there are only 12 rare cards needed, um, being four giant killers, four Luminarch Aspirants, and four Faceless Havens. Uh, is that a, I can never tell, I can never tell if this is mythic rare or just rare, I believe this is just rares, um, just, a, just a rare. Um, so 12 rare, rare wild cards, and that's about it. That is way more um, reasonable than, you know, something like, um, you know, um, you know, any type of three-color deck. So like, you know, Sol you know the Sultai control deck probably has something like uh, 40 plus rares uh, in it. Fa rares or mythic rares. Um, and so this deck just requiring uh, 12 rares everything else is either a common or uncommon so uh, if you are new to the game or you don't play that much and you don't really have that many wild cards and you want to play standard this might be a really good option um, and if again if so if you if you have the sideboard but you don't have the skyclave apparitions just run anything else you can run another soul guide lantern um, you could run more banishing lights um, it really is up to you in um, for the sideboard, you know, if you don't have Skyclave Apparition. Um, yeah, so that's the deck. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm only gonna be playing best of one. Uh, I'm not gonna use the sideboard this episode, but I did just want to show you guys that uh, I think this deck is better suited for um, best of ones because it's an aggro deck, um, and again, because it's a budget deck, the sideboard isn't really <laughs> too substantial. Um, all right, let's get into the games. All right, uh, this hand is pretty good. I really don't see anything wrong with it. I mean, uh, we don't really have a great follow-up for Card Spell Cleric. All right, well, there's a follow-up. Um, I think I'm playing this first. Am I? No, I'm actually playing this, because I want to put a plus and plus encounter on the Usher. I think we're playing the mirror here. Yeah, this is the mirror. Um, Alright, let's just do this. Play here. And let's put a... Let's see, probably a counter on... the Usher. And then we just won't attack. Could probably wait till next turn. Rick play this and Usher. This move you cast your second spell. Okay. I'm gonna play the Faceless Haven and then play the Heraldic Banner. Choose white. Might as well cast this. Right. Uh, I guess might as well attack with this. It does have Vigilance, so yeah. Like, he can trade with the Seasoned Hollow Blade, but it's uh, trading a card in his hand. Or he can sack the Selfless Savior if he really wants to save a card. Interesting, so he's green-white. Um, next turn we can attack with both of our Ushers and just make 1-1s. Uh, 
Right, boast is if we have multiples, right, we can still, um... Oh, shoot, and then he casts another card, and then he gets two spirits. That's... Mm, guess I can play Sanctuary Lockdown. Give my humans extra power, or extra toughness. Oh, these aren't humans! Might as well just attack like this. This gives me a human, though. Yeah, these these guys give me humans. Um. Yeah, I guess let's just attack here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the last card in his hand. He gets activate this. We get uh, a three-two. Yeah, because of banner and lockdown. Okay, so he likes the card in his hand, whatever it is. Hmm. I think I just won't block. Alright, let's play this. Do we even need to do that? I guess if I decide to attack with um, the Usher, then maybe. He'll probably tap down the face to save in. Interesting. Sure. I'm just gonna attack with uh, all my dudes. Opponent took a lot of damage there. If they have an anthem effect, this isn't great. Um, hmm. No anthem effect. They have a creature? No creature. So we can tap this, play lockdown, and. I could actually instead just uh, go to combat, because now I have a, a, f a f big guy to block with. Right? And he doesn't have enough power to kill me on the crackback? Yeah. So, like, <sighs> this is kind of risky. But yeah, I'm gonna, because he can also use the giant killer to tap down my guy. Does he have another spell? Sure. Why would you not wait for my face to save in? Seems like a horrible idea. Block like this, right? Hmm. Is that a human? That is a human, actually. Um, so I guess I'll play this. Because that can't activate this. Um, actually, yeah. Because now I can attack like this. I don't think I'm winning this race anymore. Because if I attack with this, they block one. And then they kill me on the crackback. So yeah, I have to do like this. They'll block... they won't block? Okay, then I'll do that. I'm a little confused. Uh, yep, that's fine. Okay. Do you have a Anthem? I'm confused. Let's tap this down by tapping down my dudes. So now they can't stop me from gaining life. Um, does this allow me to attack more? So I'm playing this, because this was the same as before. Ooh, do they have something? 
they have something. Um, I think I'm still leaving Faceless Haven back. Because so this game gives me the 6. Hmm. What can they have? Oh, they can have another giant killer? This is another giant killer. I might be screwed. How do I lose this game? If they have the giant killer, um, am I dead anyways? Or Kabira takedown? I guess they can have Kabir take. If I have, if they have either of those, they kill the beloved princess, and then I'm just dead, right? So I might as well just attack with everything. Okay. I will activate this. Damage? Seems really weird. Because now I'm at 6. And I have enough to block. I can, like, they can't tap, double tap both, so. Love Struck Beast is fine. That's fine. Uh, let's. Tap somebody down, I guess? No, right, I guess if he wants to attack with all the spirits. Like, sure. Um. It's an interesting game. Okay, he. We need to tap down the giant killer. Okay. That lets me attack and block with the faceless haven. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. So don't I just win if I just uh, click attack all? What a game! Wow. I got a little nervous there, because, uh... They had some flyers. Uh, deck does not deal well with flyers unless we have Giant Killer. Um... Yeah. Oh, I forgot to do this. <laughs> And looks good. And we're on the play. Don't mind if I do. I'll jam a Usher of the Fallen here. Um, and this is a kind of a point of contention is like, uh, if they don't play anything that we need to be concerned about, do we just uh, activate or do we... Alright, well that answers my question now because uh, now I'm just gonna use uh, Selfless Savior. Y'all right there, bud? Like, yes, you get to deal me one damage. Um, I'll just play uh, Beloved Princess. Uh, see if I can gain some life next turn. I don't think I'll be able to. Um, but this plays well into Sanctuary Lockdown if I draw a land. Um, I'm expecting, like, Bone Crusher here. Ooh, no, Robber of the Rich. Sure. <laughs> I'm the better aggro deck. Uh, actually, I'm just gonna jam and... Probably just activate, right? I really need to draw land, though. Land soon, please. 
All right, there's the face haven that they run. All right, understandable. Uh, I'm not gonna block. Boy, I do not like that. All right, I will attack like this. All right, and then I'll jam two giant killers. This is uh, very bad. We have all of our uh, three cost guys in our hand, and uh, not a lot to show for it. They have uh, more frostbites. Interesting. Um, so if they have land, spell, they get to activate Robber of the Rich this turn. Okay. I assume... Ooh, no, they don't. Um... I will not block, actually. I'm just gonna take it. Because now I can... Well, as I say that. Alright, I'm gonna plan to use Giant Killer if they decide to use Faceless Haven. I mean, yeah. Oh, it's only a spell, not ability. That's actually kind of nice. Alright, well, they got a land off the top of our deck. And we still didn't hit a land. Holy moly. Um... I think I gotta keep... I gotta keep tapping down the gold span dragon. I don't think uh, I win this game. Goodness gracious. Uh, they got a... Alright, I will do that. Um, that's not funny. They had all of their... Oh my god, they had three frostbites. Are you kidding me? And I had non no lands. I did not draw a single land. Alright. Why don't they activate Faceless Haven? They could have uh, given it hate, like they had had uh, vigilance, so they could have played this afterwards, anyways. It's kind of a uh, misplay, slight misplay from the opponent. All right, cool. Um, I will play this. Does this do anything for me? They can just block the fireblade charger, so I guess I don't want to attack here. But I guess this like stops them from. I really need to draw. I like, even though that it was a lifelinker that was great, but like, or sorry, the the Lumarock Aspirant was like a good draw. Huh. All right, let's see what the Robber of the Rich exiles. Looks like nothing. More lands. I'm just gonna not block. I need to give this lifelink or get get this buff this length lifelinker up. Oh my goodness. Alright, well, I'm gonna do this. But we'll play both of the uh, selfless saviors. And see if I can gain some life. <laughs> woof woof. Uh, this doesn't do anything for me, right? Because they just, like. Does this do anything for me? You're kind of too far gone, right? Wait, can I? Uh, auto auto assign combat damage. Yes, let's do this, and then I can assign all three damage to just the. This is something that I've seen people do. I can assign all the combat damage here so they don't get to deal uh, any damage there. This doesn't really win me the game. Uh, in fact, in many cases, it just kind of loses me the game. Just slower. Okay, cool. <laughs> and opponent. I, after all of that work, uh, I'm going to change that back uh, at the beginning of the next game. <laughs> That's like the one instance where it's kind of relevant. Nifty trick, by the way, for 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 people um, to to do that. Uh, if there is a death trigger on a card that you don't want to trigger, 
um, you can do that. So, a uh, good teaching lesson, but it did not end up working out because we lost, or we missed so many land drops. But, it's alright. All right, another good hand here. We have way more uh, uh, equal distribution of lands and spells. Um, ooh, we have rogues. I'll just jam the usher here. Um, Season Hollow Blade is kind of a good card, depending on what they do on their turn two. So I don't believe they can counter this successfully, so I'm just going to jam this. If they counter it, they counter it. Mm, dang. Oops. Ooh, they milled the Luminarch Aspirant. Big sad. Alright, well, now we can kind of uh, play all the cards we want here. We can play our own Seasoned Hollow Blade now, our, our, our other Seasoned Hollow Blade. Um, and actually, I'm going to play a Giant Killer here, so that we can tap down this, this uh, Nighthawk Scavenger. Um, it's annoying. Is this your graveyard or your opponent's graveyard? So if they mill over stuff, we can Giant's Killer... this, maybe? I guess we're never going to be able to do that because they don't have the uh, necessary creature types... or card type. We don't have the card types in our deck. I'm just going to jam here. Um, do I want to bother playing this? I guess I do. Um, I'm gonna just pass. And we'll tap down the Nighthawk Scavenger on their attack step. Jesus, they milled over two Luminar Gasperants now. Alright, that's fine. Um, let's play this, and let's actually get to attacking first. Um, attack with the Hollow Blade. Um, and I'm actually just going to keep this Selfless Savior in my hand because it's a giant killer I want to be able to use to murder the Nighthawk Scavenger. Um, actually, wait. If that goes back to our hand, then I'm able to murder that. Are you are you all right, bro? <laughs> that was kind of weird. Is it not? Sure. We do have to outpace them at some points. That's a good way to do that. Um, yeah, let's do that. They can probably counter this, though, which is unfortunate. Ooh. All 
Alright, that's fine. Then I can just activate this. Yeah, they mill me a bunch, but like the milling is not the problem. The milling is the or the problem is the creatures in the air. Opponent is missing land drops. Um Okay, that's fine, because I can just murder that. Um, I'm going to play this. Yeah, I'm going to play this and the Selfie Savior. Or the Venerable Knight. The Venerable Knight's a 3-2. So I actually kind of want to play that instead. And jam with my dude again. Because now I'm putting my opponent in a really awkward position where they don't want to attack with both of their guys um, fearing all of my my creatures attacking back. Uh, and remember I still have the Faceless Haven to attack with. Okay, what you got, opponent? Nothing. Um, let's just let's play selfless savior, and then activate faceless saving probably. And then just jam with everyone. Yeah, that's fine. Again, the milling is not the problem. It's a death toucher, so it's like kind of annoying. Do you have another... Um... Sure, that's fine. You still have to block a lot of guys. Like, you have to block here... And you still have to block, right? Yeah, you still have to block. So that's fine. So I will sack this to give this indestructible. Because this also allows Venerable Knight to put the counter on Faceless Haven. Cool. Yeah, I think their opponent got really mana screwed. Uh, they couldn't divvy off all the spells they had in their hand, but also I think our deck just uh, got going faster than they did. Their tempo deck, and, and we were able to kind of just beat down. Awesome. And that is the one of the uh, top tier decks in the format, Rogue uh, Demir Rogues. Um, so the fact that this deck is pretty handedly, like, again, this is what I'm saying, is like, is this a deck top tier? No, but when I play this deck against other top tier decks, it feels like I'm playing a, a similar power level uh, of game. All right, uh, here we have a pretty decent hand, uh, all one drops. Um, we're going to lead on the Usher of the Fallen. Um, and we might actually save this Kabira takedown, since um, if we can activate uh, Usher on turn two, uh, then we're kind of in a in a good position to make use of the uh, front side of Kabir takedown. Gilded goose, you say? All right, well let's bop our opponent here and get a token. Double green. Hmm. All right. Well, now I've kind of changed my mind where I would like to use Code Spell Cleric here. So I'm actually gonna use Selfless Savior first. I guess Usher of the Fallen deals more damage. I'm actually gonna use Usher of the Fallen and use Code Spell Cleric 
to put a counter on one of them. I guess I do I need to play Kabir Takedown right now? I guess I don't need to. If they play something big next turn, I'm gonna wish that I kept it. Actually no, because I have Giant Killer. Never mind. I'm actually gonna play it here. Yeah, they get to make another food. Yeah, we have Giant Killer um, for for chop down, so um, if they play something big here, then that that can deal with it. We don't need uh, Kabir Takedown to do that. I guess if they had a Planeswalker, but like, this is Mono Green, they're not going to have Planeswalkers. I'm assuming they're going to play, like, they could play, um, was it a uh, Questing Beast? That would be like the typical play pattern I would see here. Witch's Oven. Oh, this is Mono Green food. Okay. What do they have uh, on th for three mana? I don't know. Hmm. What am I doing next turn if I, they don't do that? Then I guess I just play Selfless Savior and activate one Usher, unless I draw a land in which I activate both Ushers. Ah, there's there's Skews. There's a boy Skews. Um, I'm gonna play the land here. I guess I am just, yeah, attacking with everything. I assume, yeah, I assume they don't want to trade for the selfless or save uh, trade for the Usher of the Fallen if they have skews here. Because if they block, then I guess they could block with Gilded Goose. But yeah, I don't see that as very favorable favorable for them. Yeah, that's what I expected. Um, so then I will just activate both Ushers. going very wide. Hopefully we draw one of our Anthem effects um, soon. That would be nice. Uh, don't instead if we have something else that's like... Uh, oh no, maybe it's something else that's upcoming that I thought. There was like some two meta uh, enchantment that was like choose a creature type. Uh, they all get plus one plus one in white. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, that might be a rare that like this deck is deciding not to run for budget reasons. Um, I'll have to look back at that. Let me look at that actually over here. Hmm. Not that I'm saying. Alright, hold up. I guess I'll play that. Uh, I'm gonna play Selfless Savior here. Um, do I want to attack with anything? I guess I do. I do need to attack with these guys. Even though it's gonna give him a Skews activation. I guess I can just... Uh, Oh no, there is an extra uh, Rally the ranks. When it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures you control the chosen type get plus one, plus one. Um, Alright, let's do this so that this gets instructable. Why did I do that? Why did I just let it die? Oh, they didn't realize that they could use Skews. Alright, I will activate this. This is a weird game. This is definitely bot. Anyways, um, that is a rare, so if you have that as well, you could run that instead of some of the other um, effects. But I still think um, the banner is is a good addition. I guess I'll just activate this. I don't know what I'm doing, man. <laughs> 
I'm confused by our opponent's deck, and uh, I'm uh, I was confused by that play as well. That was a misplay. I should have just done nothing, um, and let the um. I think I should do this. I should play one of these, right? No, right? I guess let's just play this and pass, and then use it to tap the Wicked Wolf, and then go on the offensive. Um, but yeah, that was a misplay. I should have just, with the with uh, instead of sacking the Selfless Saver, I just let the usher Ushers die. Um, and then, because uh, if it was a better, uh, a more a knowledgeable player about scavenging use, they could have given their Scoos 8 plus 1 plus 1 counter. Um, instead of sacking their Scoos to the Witch's Oven. Alright, well this has become a weird game now. Okay, they have Koga. Kogla. Uh, I can just kill that, right? Yeah, wait. This isn't a human, this isn't a human, so this just dies. Uh, I know, don't get the giant killer from here. This goes right to the graveyard, but I get to keep the one on the battlefield. So don't I just get to bop them? If I draw an Anthem Effector, don't I just win? Oh, Dang. Uh, let me tap this. Tap that boy down. Ooh, I thought I almost had him. Um, we're close, though. Alright, let's see what they got. They can't really play anything too expensive. Um, so, uh, because they need to be able to sack food um, to stay afloat here. And they can't really attack. They have another Wicked Wolf. They get to kill my Luminarch Aspirant. But, well... I would actually kill the human there, right? Because also, hmm, I get to tap down this wicked wolf, and then I get to attack. Yeah, I think we got it. Yeah, our opponent was kind of just on the back foot the whole game. They didn't really play anything too early. That was the problem with our opponents. They, they had Gilded use, they just kind of used it to make mana. Oh, we draw another uh, Limerick Aspirant. I'll do this first. Um, and I'll do this. Um, I guess I'll do this to force him to sack a food. Because if the game goes long, then... He's kind of forced, but, um, yep, looks like our opponent is pretty dead. Alright, so hitting them for Xaxes here, um, yep, sure, do all of those things. So I don't think any real math mattered, but yeah, I just our opponent there was really on the back foot uh, the whole entire game, just because they didn't make use of the early ad mana advantage of Guild of Goose. Maybe they just didn't have things, um, but we kind of just got out in front. Alright, and there you go, and that is the deck tech for White Weenies. Uh, budget White Weenies. Uh, as you saw, the deck had a pretty impressive win percentage. Uh, I think, you know, uh, you know the I forget the exact record, but something like you know, two and one, three and two, definitely a you know at least a fifty percent or up win rate, um, and uh, definitely proved its own against a lot of top tier decks. Um, the main ones being uh, mono red, 
uh, and uh, although I believe we, lo we lost to Mono Red, but um, you know it was a competitive game, and then we went against Demir Rogues, which is a top tier deck. Um, yeah, and you know again the, this is made up of again majority uh, comments and uncommons. Again, twelve rares. You do have Rally the Ranks um, from Call Time if you want to add. Um, this was a little bit less unnecessary because in this case, Heraldic Banner and Sanctuary Lockdown just kind of tend to be better. Um, oops, sorry, my power is going in and out. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, so like I would probably replace Sanctuary Lockdown with it, although the tap ability did end up coming in in one, but uh, the one mana cheaper is just kind of way better. Um, and uh, oh, maybe even just av having more effects. So maybe instead of running Kabira Takedown, you run two of these. Uh, but you can mess around with the deck um, depending on what you have in your collection or not. So if you don't have this again, you don't need it. Um, just a, a, a potential consideration. Um, but otherwise, deck is uh, fairly cheap um, to uh, construct. So uh, if you uh, like this deck and you know you, you don't play Arena that much or you knew, this is my suggestion to you. Um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Uh, that's going to do for me. Um, if you guys enjoy this video, want to see more uh, contact, content like it, uh, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, all of that stuff. You can also check me out uh, at uh, twitch.tv, uh, link down below. Uh, I play Magic, I play uh, other games, um, so yeah, check that out. Uh, and yeah, look out for more videos, and I'll see you guys next time.